Good morning, I'm Alejandro Pérez Rodríguez, PhD student at Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, and I will give you an overview of my current line of work on uh, primordial black hole and gravitational wave production from dissipative effects during inflation. Uh, the content of this talk is based on work currently in progress together with my PhD supervisor, Guillermo Ballesteros, and other collaborators. Before going to dissipative effects, let us uh, review the, the phenomenology we are looking for. So for primordial black holes, we know from the pressure formalism that if we have a peak in the primordial power spectrum at a certain um, scale, we will have an enhanced production of primordial black holes with a mass which is a function of the scale through this formula. Further assuming a, a Gaussian distribution for the fluctuations, a certain value for the critical um, for the critical over density and the production of black holes in radiation domination, we get the following. Uh, important uh, quantitative result which tells us that for primordial black holes of a certain mass to account for the totality of dark matter we need a peak in the primordial power spectrum at the corresponding scales of order 10 to the minus 2 which accord according to current constraints is only possible in, in this uh, window of masses here. For the case of uh, gravitational waves, uh, primordial gravitational waves, we know they are sourced by second order scalar perturbations therefore they are the primordial power spectrum of gravitational waves is an integral whose integral has a product of two copies of the primordial power spectrum. Same way there is a, an equivalence between mass and commuting scale for primordial black holes, there is an equivalence between frequency and commuting scales for gravitational waves, or if you wish there is a triple equivalence, commuting scale, mass of primordial black holes, fre frequency of gravitational waves. And this, these kind of relations imply an important result, which is that if uh, primordial black holes of a certain mass were to account for the totality of dark matter, which, as we have just said, can only occur in, in this window mass here, then the corresponding gravitational wave background would have um, the right uh, amplitude, the right frequencies, to be potentially detectable by LISA. And before moving into the, the specific uh, content of my talk, let me mention that there has been a previous work on the production of primordial black holes and gravitational waves in the framework of what is called warm inflation, which is a kind of, um, of a particular case of the dissipative effects we will discuss in this talk. And here I mentioned two recent papers which address uh, this issue. So uh, we now enter dissipative uh, effects, uh, which arise when the inflaton couples to radiation under some technical assumptions coming from thermal field theory, one of which, a particularly important one, is the thermalization assumption, which uh, tells us that the radiation energy density is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. At the level of the background equations, this coupling simply introduces an extra friction term in the equation for the inflaton and a source term in the equation for the otherwise uh, exponentially suppressed uh, radiation energy density. At the level of the perturbations, however, the effect of the coupling, uh, the effects of the coupling are more complicated. First of all, we get extra perturbations. Uh, so on top of the usual inflaton perturbations and metric, um, metric perturbations we have in, in a certain gauge, we also get uh, radiation perturbations due to the new uh, radiation terms in the energy momentum tensor. Due to the presence of these uh, radiation terms, we cannot have a single equation for the evolution of the, of the commuting curvature perturbation, as we have, for instance, with, a, <clears throat> with the Muhanov-Sasaki equation in, um, in single field inflation. Moreover, and this is perhaps the, the, most relevant, um, the most relevant feature at the perturbation level of, of, of these dissipative effects, due to the fluctuation dissipation theorem in the context of non-equilibrium QFT, which is the right um, theory in which to study this perturbation theory, we have stochastic transfer terms among scalar perturbations and radiation perturbations. And these stochastic transfer terms at the level of the dynamics translate into stochastic sources which appear in the system of coupled differential equations for the different perturbations. So what we have to do is, for a specific model, we have to solve this system of coupled differential equations with random sources to get the thermally averaged primordial power spectrum, which, as we discussed at the beginning, will give us the uh, phenomenology in terms of primordial black holes and gravitational waves. We have explored two mutually consistent uh, numerical approaches to to get this quantity, the first one is a Fokker-Planck approach, which is a well-known method used, for instance, in, uh, in stochastic inflation. And in this method, what one does is taking the system of stochastic differential equations, like the one we have, 
and converting it into a system of ordinary differential equations, but not for the perturbations, but for the correlations of the perturbations, which means that now we have more unknowns and more equations because we have as many self-correlations as we have perturbations, but on top of that, we have all the cross-correlations, which have, we have to solve for. So we solve the system of ordinary differential equations for all these perturbations, for all these quantities, these correlations, sorry, and uh, then we recast them into the thermally average square modulus of the commuting curvature perturbation with which we can compute the thermally average power spectrum through this formula. The other approach we have studied is a Monte Carlo approach in which we randomize the source, the stochastic source, for, for each time. And once we have done so, uh, these are no longer stochastic equations, but ordinary differential equations because these are no longer random variables, but numbers. Um, therefore, we solve the system of ordinary differential equations for these particular realizations of the perturbations. With the result, we compute a particular realization of the square modulus of the curvature perturbation. Iterating several times and taking the average, we estimate the thermal average of this quantity, and with it, again, we can compute the thermally averaged primordial power spectrum. So with these mathematical tools, we can now move on to study specific models. And a class of models we have found to be of particular interest for the production of uh, primordial black holes and gravitational waves are those in which the dissipative effects are only relevant for a few efforts, like the one I show here in which the dissipative friction dominates Hubble friction for like five efforts. And I have, I have marked with this gray shade the, the strongly dissipative region. At the level of background dynamics, um, this kind of, of um, temporary uh, dissipative effect uh, dissipative effects have um, a clear a clear signature. We see a suppression of the kinetic term of the inflaton and uh, an enhancement of the uh, radiation energy density. And th this can actually, this kind of dynamics, can be uh, understood or visualized through a, a classical analogy with a body that is dissipating heat as it moves uh, through a viscous fluid. Right. So the larger the friction, the more suppressed uh, is the velocity, and the more enhanced is the the, the temperature or the radiation density. Let me make a remark about this plot here for those of you who are familiar with uh, ultra slow roll inflation, because in ultra slow roll inflation we have a very similar suppression of the kinetic energy of the of the of the inflaton, like the one we have here, and in that case it is this suppression that gives rise to a peak in the primordial power spectrum. In our case we will have a peak in the primordial power spectrum, but the reason for the peak will not be this uh, this background level suppression of the velocity of the inflaton, as we will discuss later. Right? This is this is an, an important remark about uh, this kind of models. Okay, so we have this model. We plug it into either the Fokker-Planck or the Monte Carlo approach, um, and we get this power spectrum, which is basically all we wanted uh, in a power spectrum. Well, first of all, notice that for small values of the commuting scale. Um, it matches the CMB normalization, which is an amplitude of roughly 10 to the minus 9. Then for a certain scale, we have a peak of amplitude 10 to the minus 2, which is the amplitude we were looking for. And furthermore, the position of the peak uh, is uh, customizable. We can, we can move it around. And the reason for this is that, as I mentioned before, here, this is the strongly dissipative region. And in this plot, this uh, gray band, marks the modes that exit the horizon during this strong dissipative region. Therefore, moving these sidewards, or in other words, changing the position of the, of the peak of gamma, has the effect of changing uh, this, uh, this gray band here, and the peak happens to be always at the end of this uh, strong dissipative region. Therefore, moving these sidewards effectively changes the position of the peak. In summary, we have a peak of amplitude 10 to the minus 2 at basically whatever scale we want to put it, uh, which is what we need to achieve the phenomenology we described at the beginning of the talk. And for uh, just for completeness, let me show the primordial, the associated primordial gravitational wave um, spectrum in which we see the distinctive signature for a peak in the primordial power spectrum, which is this kind of succession of a small peak and a larger peak. We could stop here because so far we, we have achieved what we were looking for, right, which is a uh, um, a power spectrum which is uh, capable of explaining the right uh, primordial black hole and gravitational wave phenomenology uh, through dissipative effects during inflation. However, we would like to understand better what is the, the, the physical um, 
what is the, the, the physics behind this enhancement in the primordial power spectrum. And in order to do so, we need to, to find an, analy an analytical uh, solution of the equations. Now, as you can imagine, um, solving analytically the system of coupled differential equations with the stochastic sources is, is not an option, right? We need a simplified version of the equations. So in order to achieve, uh, to achieve such a, a simplified equation, first thing we do is decouple the delta phi equation from the rest of the equations. The, the process to do so is uh, rather, rather lengthy. There are several technical arguments, but basically there are, there are two kinds of reasonings one has to do in order to, to do this. So either terms uh, which couple inflaton perturbations to other perturbations are slow or suppressed and keep, can be neglected as a first approximation, or uh, certain perturbations that appear coupled to the inflaton can be um, estimated a priori with, without solving the system of equations, and therefore we can plug inside the equation for delta phi a parametrization of its solution. Using these kind of arguments, we end up having a single equation for delta phi, again, with a stochastic source. Second approximation we make is that we, um, we simplify the, the commoving curvature perturbation, which in principle has contributions from the inflaton metric and radiation perturbations. We discard uh, these two metric and radiation perturbations, which is well motivated um, from numerical experiments. And we can write this simple equation for, for R, which is basically delta phi, up to a background quantity. And the third approximation we make is that we parameterize the background um, as piecewise constants. Uh, so the background quantities as piecewise constants. So for instance, if we have this quantity here, we would parameterize it as a constant in this region, then another constant in this region, and then another constant in this region, and so on for every background quantity. So with, with these three simplifications, we can actually solve the homogeneous equation that is the left-hand side equated to zero uh, for each region in which the background is constant in terms of Bessel functions, and then glue together the different solutions using uh, continuity conditions until we get a global uh, homogeneous solution. With this, we can compute a Green's function through standard methods, and with a homogeneous solution or a Green's function, we can write a solution for the full equation, which is the homogeneous solution plus the integral of the Green's function times the source, which in our, in our case happens to be, uh, remember, uh, stochastic. And performing a bit of algebra on, on this solution, we get that the thermally average primordial power spectrum from the inflaton perturbation equals the spectrum of the homogeneous solution times a correction which um, takes into account the effect of the stochastic source. And again, using this simplification here, we can write from here the approximate primordial power spectrum by simply introducing a 5 prime square factor. There is an important remark here, however, which is the fact that the initial conditions for the perturbation are strictly carried by this term here. Because when we write the solution of the equation in this way, it is only this term that carries um, integration constants that need to be fixed through initial conditions. Therefore, all the information about the initial conditions is inside this term. And with this solution, we can actually plot it for different modes. So here I show four modes. This is the strong dissipative region, as always, the gray band. The vertical dashed line is horizon crossing for the different modes. And you can see two important remarks um, for these plots. So the first one, it is that it is the source term or the stochastic term, whatever you want to call it, this term here, which is the blue line, it is the one that dominates the dynamics of the modes outside the horizon. What this means, remember that this was independent of initial conditions, what this means is that the value of the modes uh, of the perturbations outside the horizon is uh, largely independent of the initial conditions. Or to rephrase it in physical terms, that the thermal noise, which is contained here, has brought the the perturbations to a thermal attractor, independent of initial conditions. That's the first important remark here. And the second important remark is that for modes exiting the horizon during the strong dissipative fiction, uh, the, the strong dissipative phase, sorry, so uh, look at this mode here and particularly at this mode here, you can see that the thermal noise, again the blue line, is bringing the modes to a, to a, to a value outside the horizon which is uh, substantially enhanced with respect to the value at which modes which exit the horizon outside of the dissipative region uh, freeze, right? And this thing here is the reason why the peak in the primordial power spectrum appears. So it is purely a thermal noise effect. Notice that the homogeneous solution here is totally suppressed, is completely negligible at this point. It is only the thermal noise that is enhancing 
um, enhancing the, the values at which the modes freeze and therefore producing a peak in the primordial power spectrum. This is what I mentioned before, that it is not uh, like in ultra slow roll when you have this this suppression in the in the velocity of the inflaton producing the peak in the spectrum. In this case, it is a pure thermal noise effect, which is characteristic of dissipative effects during inflation. And uh, finally, I mentioned these uh, two papers here in which uh, they perform um, uh, somewhat similar calculation, but in a, in a simplified scenario and taking the appropriate limit in our calculations, we recover uh, results which, which are consistent to, to theirs. Finally, for completeness, I have included this plot due to my uh, collaborator, Matthias Pierre, in which you can see the consistency between the different methods we have been using. So the red line is the, the power spectrum obtained from the Fokker-Planck approach. The green dots are um, the average of realizations of the Monte Carlo approach. The gray bands are the dispersion of these averages. You can see that the consistency between these two methods is, is very, very good. And then the analytical approach does not uh, render a good um, uh, an accurate um, quantitative result, but this is something we should expect, taking into account uh, the amount of simplifications we have introduced in the problem in order to compute the analytical approximation. So the, the goal or the motivation for the analytical approximation is not to, to recover the proper accurate uh, numerical result. Instead, it is to understand the physics uh, underlying in this peak of the power spectrum precisely through the separation between homogeneous and inhomogeneous contributions we have just discussed. And let me, let me finish by, by summarizing the main points of, of the talk. So we have studied dissipative effects during inflation. We have seen how these dissipative effects during inflation um, have a, a very important effect at the perturbation level. They totally change uh, perturbation theory with respect to a standard single field inflation. In particular, they introduce a stochastic uh, dynamics, which remember come from these stochastic transfer terms in the in the in the equations for the perturbations. We get um, thermal attractors for the perturbations, independent of the initial conditions, uh, due to thermal noise, and uh, we get also due to thermal noise an enhancement of certain modes, which for models in which dissipative effects are only relevant for a few efforts translate into an enhancement of the primordial power spectrum, a local enhancement of the primordial power spectrum that is a peak. And the phenomenology of this peak is the one we discussed at the beginning, um, primordial black holes, which can account for up to the totality of dark matter in the universe, and the corresponding stochastic gravitational wave background potentially detectable by LISA. I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the discussion session, so hopefully see you there. Thank you very much.